Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, C-47 Tycho Bell participates in Hurricane Dorian relief. Prepare to attempt balloon crossing of the Atlantic Ocean in 2020. And Open Lunar Foundation unveils moon colony plans. Welcome, I'm Sophie Herlock. An airplane that once carried paratroopers into France on D-Day has taken a role in providing humanitarian relief to the hurricane-ravaged islands of the Bahamas in the wake of Hurricane Dorian. Tycho Bell, a C-47 Sky Train owned by the Valiant Air Command, based in Titusville, Florida, has joined Brevard County, Florida's relief for the Bahamas Coalition. On Saturday, the aircraft flew to Orlando International Airport to pick up about 5,000 pounds of much-needed supplies and then carried the cargo to Sandy Point on Great Abaco Island. Valiant Air Command posted a relief effort update on Monday, stating in the past three days alone, they had hauled around 12,000 to 14,000 pounds of supplies. One thing Valiant Air Command says they're in need of, however, is tarps. And if you would like to donate physical items to the cause, you can do so by bringing them to the Valiant Air Command in Titusville or the STS Hangar 4 in Melbourne, Florida. Or if you would like to donate money to help pay for the cost of the Tycho Bell's fuel, you can do so by going to Valiant Air Command's Facebook page. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's never been a better time to become a pilot. At the Sling Pilot Academy, you can get your private, commercial, and instrument ratings in nine months for less than $63,000 and do it in modern, fun airplanes. Your flight training is going to be as exciting as your future career as an airline pilot. SlingPilotAcademy.com Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, let's take a quick trip around the patch. Boeing has suspended load testing of its 777X following the failure of the static test plane's cargo door, which exploded outward during a high-pressure test. The test article was built only for ground testing and was not intended to be airworthy. Overall testing of the 777X will continue. Airbus Helicopters delivered its 1,000th Super Puma helicopter, a twin-engine multi-role H215, to the German Federal Police to support the German Havary Command. The delivery completes the German Federal Police's order of four H215s, the first of three which were delivered back in December of 2018. After losing contact with the Chandrayaan-2 Vikram lunar lander during its final descent to the moon's surface, the Indian Space Agency says it's now located the spacecraft on the surface of the moon. Contact with the lander was lost at about 2 a.m. Indian local time Saturday, when the lander was about 1.3 miles above the lunar surface. The space agency has little details about the current condition of the lander. A Russian and an Italian national have been charged in federal court in the Southern District of Ohio with conspiring and attempting to steal trade secrets from GE Aviation. 57-year-old Alexander Yurovic Korshunov and 59-year-old Marizo Palabonici were charged by a criminal complaint back on August 21st. Korshunov was arrested on August 30th at Naples International Airport. The rest of today's Airborne Unlimited is coming up right after these messages. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller.
in the summer of 2020, Deborah Day and Mike Scholes will take on an exciting and challenging record-breaking attempt to fly across the Atlantic Ocean in a Cameron Balloons gas and hot air combination balloon. The pilots plan to take off from New Brunswick with the aim to land where the wind takes them over Europe. The flight is expected to take between five to seven days, and the couple also hopes to break existing distance, duration, and altitude records for this size of aerostat. One of Day's ambitions is to be the first female pilot to cross the Atlantic Ocean, and Shoals aims to be the first registered blind person to make such a balloon crossing as crew. The balloon they'll be using is the first of its kind, and can be adapted to fly with either hydrogen or helium, and can reach altitudes in excess of 20,000 feet. The pair has decided against convention, and will use an open weave basket instead of the recommended capsule. The Open Lunar Foundation has revealed plans for a moon village after spending around five years developing the plan mostly in secret. Last week, venture capitalist Steve Jurvetson posted to Twitter the establishment of the settlement would cost only around $5 billion and could be achieved within NASA's current budget. The Open Lunar Foundation is compromised of a group of tech executives and engineers, many of which have former ties to NASA. The group has spent the last 18 months meeting in private to lay out the type of early missions that would make the most sense. The strategy of the foundation is to borrow from existing open source technology to move the project forward. They also have plans to share data and hardware designs. And that wraps up today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. To get the latest aviation aerospace news any time of the day, just head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you tomorrow.